That's iPadOS 15, taking the versatility of iPad even further. No. With new widget layouts for your home screen, app library, but where, where, and a redesigned What about the other thing? What? New note-taking uh, and translation features, and the ability to build apps with Swift Playgrounds. Combined with the great... Okay, there's a word for this feeling, but I'm so full of it, I, I can't even say it. Okay, okay, let's, let's not be unfair. Uh, I think there's a lot of good stuff here, so while I gather my thoughts, uh, let's roll the credits. What is up guys? Andrew here and welcome to Comic Booker. All things comics from a creator. Apple's Worldwide Developers Conference just happened, announcing a whole bunch of updates for all their devices. So, if you have an Apple thing that's not super old, like an iPhone or an iPad or a Mac, there are updates coming out in September that will bring some quality of life improvements that will hopefully make your device seem like brand new. There was a lot, seriously, a lot of stuff that they announced in their almost two hour keynote presentation. And I won't be going into all of that in this video. What I want to focus on here is the stuff that you can use to make art. So let's do it. First cool thing is the 3D model capture thing. This feature seems aimed mostly at developers, but I think it looks pretty cool for us artists. Basically, it's some software magic that allows you to create a quick 3D object from just a few photos using something called photogrammetry, which makes something that was previously a quite laborious task into something that feels easy and quick. I can see a few cool synergies between this and the upcoming Procreate update, which will allow you to bring 3D models into that drawing program. Imagine having a real-world reference that's really important to the comic you're making. And instead of having a few pictures, you can have a full-on 3D model that you can rotate around in your own canvas. It sounds pretty cool and I wonder how it will handle more organic forms like uh, faces or animals. We'll see. Next thing is the multitasking update for iPadOS. This is mostly a UI refresh for the current system that's already on the iPad but it seems to streamline the process so it makes it easier to use casually. So they've got these three dots at the top of the screen that you can now hit to bring up other apps in split screen or you know, in sharing mode. Um, it's easier to do and it seems like it'll be more intuitive, but it doesn't change the number of programs that you can run at the same time. So yeah, once again, if you've got any reference that's pertinent to your workflow, like maybe a script or a character design, it's gonna be easier than ever to draw it up without messing with your flow. They also added this little shelf function for apps with multiple instances in them, uh, which seems like it'll be helpful for things like Safari and Notes. Next thing is this system-wide toggle called Focus Mode, which rearranges your operating system and limits it to certain apps and connections based on what you decide you're doing at the moment. They demoed a bunch of stuff about uh, it being sleep mode and work mode, but I'm, I'm just thinking of artist mode, you know, where you have a certain workflow and a, a workspace. Say you like to draw with music on and your notifications on silent just to minimize distractions. This will let you do that pretty easily. Seems like a handy little function. Speaking of handy, they've also added quick notes to iPads, which is this cool little sketchpad function that swings out from the lower corner of the screen and lets you write something with the Apple Pencil super fast. This is great for a quick capture. Say you're watching a YouTube video and you get a quick idea and you want to draw it out. Just quick notes, swipe it away, and then find it later in the Notes app. Last and by far the most sexy announcement of this entire thing is the universal control feature, which lets you move a mouse pointer from one device to the other like magic and drag things back and forth between them. They showed a Procreate file being dragged from an iPad into a MacBook and then from that MacBook into an iMac. And honestly, it was breathtaking. <laughs> This is just one step closer to having all your devices live in the same world. Essentially one operating system across multiple screens. I would love to just work up something in Procreate and then bounce it over to Photoshop. Just, you know, playing to each program's strengths and minimize their weaknesses by bouncing between them super easily. Here's the problem though. I don't own a Mac or a MacBook. I'm actually a Windows user and I've been using the same PC for over half a decade now for all my stuff, all my desktop stuff. The iPad iPad is what I use for mobile and more. With iPad OS 15, this makes me just want to buy a MacBook now and... Uh, wait, wait. 
wait you see that that's how they get you see these past few years i've been using the ipad pro as my main machine and all i've wanted for an update is a way to use it more like a mac you know have pro apps and clamshell mode and multi-display support but after watching wwdc it feels like apple really just wants me to bind to the whole ecosystem rather than rely solely on one device like maybe for them the ipad is just a handy accessory for the mac and not a full-fledged computer in its own right and that makes me, honestly, that, that makes me just feel a bit disappointed. Uh, I ordered an M1 iPad Pro recently and it's gonna be delivered in a few weeks. And now I'm wondering if it's even worth all that money. Because from what I've seen of iPad OS 15, it doesn't look like Apple's gonna let the M1 iPad take advantage of all that power. At least not until next year. Anyway, let me leave this with one final thought. Uh, I think that these past few months, I've gotten super caught up in this hype centered around the M1 chip arriving on the iPad. Hype that's natural for people like me who want to use this as their main device. We get excited about how this is gonna finally shake off its mobile operating system shackles and become the perfect two-in-one hybrid, a, a touchscreen Mac with uh, pencil support, basically. But Apple's always behaved more like the tortoise than the hare. Content to take its time upgrading its software slowly and surely, making certain that when they finally release something, it's as good as it can be, so that we can rely on our tools to be stable for as long as humanly possible. I guess I'm saying we shouldn't get so caught up in the tools that we don't have and enjoy what we do have. I'm sure that whatever they've got planned for the iPad Pro in the future is amazing. But what we have right now is pretty amazing, to be honest. So let's not let its potential eclipse its current value as a tool for making art. So there, that's all the big stuff I like from WWDC. Was there anything cool that I missed out on? Was there anything you wanted that you didn't get? I bet there's a lot. I'm sure there's a few things. Let me know in the comments. Until next time, peace.